I wrote that song. Um, I wrote that song in a. Uh, I was in a motel room in Taos, New Mexico, and uh, I've been working on the song for a long time. And I had all written out on legal sheets of paper, and then arranged them around the room of the motel until they looked just right. <laughs> that's some songwriting. That's a songwriting trick for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'd never heard that one before. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Well, so this uh, next one is uh, one I wrote called Jokerville, and it's a mining disaster song, uh, so be prepared for that. And um, so it takes place in this valley that I grew up in in western Colorado, Gunnison Valley. How many people have been there? Okay. Yeah, you you might have to show your ring off a little bit. Oh, yes. Uh, later on, you can take a picture of me with my Gunnison ring on. That's next the first to my face. I know, that's Would the that first time I've seen this, yeah. Yeah, I just got it uh, last time I was there. Oh, wow. My house is right there. <laughs> um, Where? Right here. Okay. okay. And, uh, yeah, so the valley is beautiful. At the north end of the valley is this town called Crested Butte, and that's where the mine, most of the mining was. And there was a, um, uh, well, I grew up there, and I played basketball there in junior high. And... Um, the, and we were, I played down in Gunnison, 28 miles away was the town of Crested Butte, and we had rival middle school basketball teams. It was a very tough rivalry. Every year we lost to Crested Butte. But one time we rolled up there in the winter, and it's a very tiny gym, there's hardly any seating. We roll up into the gym, and they are practicing, the Crested Butte guys are practicing, uh, you know, just layups. But we realized their super tall guy that's usually there, he wasn't there. <coughs> Inexplicably, I thought, oh my God, we have a chance. We can beat Crested Butte this year. So, you know, I'm getting more and more confident. I'm doing the three-man weave. You know that one? I, I, do, oh. I do not know that one. Thing the the three-man weave. And then, um, you know, some layups. I do know layups. Yes, okay, well, yes. at the last minute, at the last minute, that big guy that's usually there shows up in street clothes. In street clothes. He shows up, and all the Crested Butte guys say, hey, there's so-and-so. Come on in and play. And he was in street clothes. So he walks over there, and they said, yeah, there's a uh, you know, uniform in the locker room or whatever. So, wow. So the kid takes off. Our coach, um, I, either his first or last name was Terry. Let's coach Terry. Yeah, coach Terry. Coach, Thank coach, Terry. Terry. Thank coach Terry. Terry. So I knew it was getting seri serious because Coach Terry went over to the ref referee and said, you're going to let that guy play. Suit up and play. He walks in the street clothes. And the ref said, yeah, I guess so. And Coach Terry said, I just want to let you know, that is not kosher. <laughs> now, I had only heard the word kosher about four times in my life before that, and I thought it had to do with, you know, Jewish dietary practices. I had no idea it applied to basketball, but it, it does. So, so all this, so the kid, the, the big kid comes out and he starts playing, and uh, the game is underway, and the guy is going up the right side every time. He really couldn't dribble left-handed, at all, but he didn't need to because he was so huge. So he's going down the right side every time and dunking it in. And so, no, no I, I'm sorry, he's not dunking. He could have dunked. He could have dunked. It was middle school, I guess. There will be a question and answer period later. So please save your questions. Who is this lady heckling us? Yes, exactly. So, the guy keeps going down and almost dunking it every time. Just crushing it. So, all of a sudden, the Coach Terry yells out, Fickle? Because I was on the bench. I'm sure you're shocked to hear that I was not a starter. I was not a starter. I'm on the bench, and Coach Terry goes, Fickle? That's my last name. Fickle? And that's, that's the moment I've been waiting for all my, all my 13 years up until that point. I joined sports so someone would yell at me by my last name. A man would yell at me by my last name. That's why I did sports. I'm like, yes. He said, Fickle, I want you to go in there and stop that guy. I said, yes, Coach. Yes, Coach, I'm ready. Because my mother had just purchased, this is before contacts were widely available. Now I got contacts in my phone. <laughs> so I had, I, I, had no, I had no contacts. I had glasses, sports glasses that were indestructible. Um, in fact, the irony is they look like the glasses I'm wearing right now. <laughs> but they were very nerdy, very nerdy glasses. I was ready to go. I walk in, and I, I, I checked in at the uh, scoring table, of course, to sub in. And... I, the guy comes barreling down, barreling down the right side. I knew he was going to go down the right side. I've been paying attention. Yeah. So I assumed the player position. The 
because I'm kind of, yeah, kind of like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't do it because it hurts my knees. <laughs> I used to be able to do it very well. And so the kid just plows into me, runs me over, and knocks me down flat. Mm. And scores a basket. No call. <laughs> and so even a I get up very disconcertedly, very disconcertedly, and I look down, and my special expensive sports glasses have been broken. Oh. And it was that moment I decided to start writing songs. <laughs> They shut that mind down, but not before I heard the sound on that cold January 24. You could hear it rumble through the valley from the timberline. On the vocals, Ginger Curry. 